the, just a quick look at the employee numbers. Um, when we passed the sales tax, it was the criminal justice sales tax, and that's where the investment was to be made with that. Uh, the red line at the top is the total uh, county employment and general fund and justice system sales tax departments only. Um, the black line at the bottom are the non-criminal justice departments. So you can see even after the cuts were made, we're still lower in employment in the non-criminal justice departments. You'll see in that purple line, the investment has been made in the criminal justice departments, um, consistent with the, uh, the sales tax means on that. Um, just as a footnote, uh, I'll get to it later. I was going to mention it here, but I've got another you know. Quick look at the 2015 budget request. You'll see in 2014, we appropriated just over $61 million. Our requests this year, all in with operational and capital expenses, were over $66.5 million. So we, uh, you can see clearly there's a, a bit of a move, a spread there between the New revenue estimate around 62 million to the 66, and you can see where those are by department. And again, I'm going a little faster than last year because I have a room full of educated people. You have it in your hands, so I'm pretty sure I don't need to read through. But if I get going too fast or skip over anything, please feel free to interrupt. Consistent with last year, the directives I was given by the board: the county must live obviously within our means. New revenue for a year must support the operational budgets of the county. Carryover funds can't be used for day-to-day -day operations. We must build a 2015 budget, putting us on a sustainable trajectory to operate for the next five years, leading up to the sales tax renewal. Assumptions in the budget model, again, holding to the guidelines of 2% increases in salary expenses for each year. And the second footnote is one everybody needs to note. The 2016 and 14 forecast does not include any additional employees from where we're at, budgeting and funding in 2015. Uh, as you saw in the employment numbers, you know, we made the investment in criminal justice, made a little, some of the comeback in the non-criminal justice departments, but we're really getting to the, to the size of Stark County government that we can afford on the revenue streams that we have. And we really need to get to a point now where we can stabilize and maintain In the other assumptions in the budget model and operating expenses, you see 2.75% increase in 16 and 2.5% in those out years. Um, just a little higher in 2016, because again, there are some new hires in 2015. So when they're fully net loaded in the 2016 budget, there's gonna be a little bit higher of a month next year. But then again, stabilizing with our headcount and employee numbers then into a 2.5% growth rate. I'm sorry. Again, forecasted revenue, you saw that uh, earlier in the presentation. And again, always trying to maintain a carryover balance of at least 10% of our new revenues. Also in the budget assumptions, uh, capital has big, been a big item the last couple of years and there's a few other things coming. Uh, you'll see in the budget uh, that's proposed, because I know everybody since you got the paper, you did two things, you went to your page of your department and then you probably worked your way backwards looking at some other things. You'll see that we've got a little over $3 million in capital appropriated for this year proposed. We had a little over $3 million last year, and then we have $2 million in the out years forecasting ahead. If you look back, because of the financial constraints of the county, there was a lot of capital that was not kept up to par and that just was not taken care of. If you look back in 09 to 13, we only averaged about $600,000 a year in capital investment and expenditures in our buildings and everything else. Um, so we've really had, to, there's been a catch up that's taken place the last couple of years. There's still a few things that are out there. And even that 09 to 13 number uh, is a little bit misleading uh, because 13 started to be a little bit of a pickup in capital. If you actually looked at 2009 through 12, it was only about $400,000 a year that we were investing in the infrastructure of the county. Um, we have some large anticipated capital projects coming. Um, drainage every year especially this time of year, we're gonna start having the heavy rains, flooding issues, things like that. Um, the county commissioners make a, an allocation for drainage projects, working with the engineer each year. We've also got some large projects that are probably coming down the horizon when we start talking about retention and detention, <coughs> and it's not just cleaning ditches, and those really become expensive projects. 
that we need to make sure that we're ready for and sustain. Um, the county's radio system is going to be not supported by Motorola by the end of this decade. So we're looking at a number of options right now from partnering with Marks, from investing and re, uh, rebuilding our own, which that, depending on which way we go, could be anywhere between six and $12 million. And we don't have a final price tag even on those, but it's a significant expense that's laying out there a few years out. And we've got a few, we've taken care of a number of rooms in the county, but uh, we've got to complete the cycle here. We've got three more in the next couple of years, all of which carry very heavy price tags, but hopefully they'll take care of us roof-wise for a while. But just again, a footnote that there's a number of significant capital projects laying out there ahead of time.